Welcome back to the biology of Kundalini with Jana Dixon reading and discussion. Yesterday we were talking about die-offs. So, and the stages of the down trip, lightning, shock, self-digestion, and burnout. A lot of stuff, right? We ended with a really great quote yesterday that we all have to come down and that this loss feels like losing oneself, one's lover, one's muse, one's God. The difference um, is shocking. And then if we do not do the work to rejoice ourselves, then life feels like it's not really worth living. What was given us so abundantly by grace must now be won by discipline, hard work, and character development. So we talked about how we get the vision, we get the kundalini experience, we get the God moment, we get the gift, we get the relationship, we get whatever the thing that feels so glorious, but then it's taken from us. And then the universe is saying, you know what you are able to have, you've got to now do the inner work to get there and to match it. That is where we're at right now. So she says, November, December is the most profound die off in the Northern Hemisphere. It has to do with the Earth's movement around the sun just prior to solstice and the gravitational forces of Earth turning into the bend of the elliptic and changing directions. However, there is no die off prior to the summer solstice due to our hormonal mix based on growth rather than sentience. The more thoroughly we die off, the more refined our intellectual achievement in the next year. So listen to how important that is. The more thoroughly we die off. So that means we gotta let ourselves surrender into the, de the death process, which can be very depressing and very sad and very disillusioning and hurt. It can actually hurt in our body, but the more thoroughly we allow this, then our intellectual achievements are more refined over the next year. So around Easter, she says, is my peak of the year for intellect. And again, in July with the maximum prana flow that happens then. So if you find yourself really peaking in energy and PSI during July, chances are you will have die off in November, especially if it's triggered by a transcendental dream or a significant event in relationship. The video, The Naked Truth by Jordan Maxwell and the International Research and Education Society on Google Video is exceptional. So look that up, The Naked Truth. It shows the mythic similarity of the world's main religions and how the elements of the story are based on sun worship and the sun's progression through the zodiac. This is probably the most healing and informative documentary out there, she says. They say that when the traditions talk of a three-day death resurrection period, this is actually referring to when the sun stays three days at the same point at the lowest part of the sundial during the winter solstice, which is also known as the belly of Jonah. It just so happens that the metamorphic die-off often constitutes three days also. So this is the die and be reborn that we see again and again in traditions all over the world that's common in Christianity, but also the Osiris story. There's many stories with the dying and the resurrecting after three days. This is also talking about our own awakening process. The perennial story goes, the son of the sun god gave up his blood so that we sinners could be absolved of our sins so we would no longer feel guilty. Then, with a free conscious, this world would ensure that the sun, or light, would indeed rise again tomorrow. Thus, we keep the sun, earth, and planets in their orbits by sacrificing the golden child. All right? So we're going into assisted die-off. I think this is really important because uh, a lot of times we think, or if we grew up in Christianity or Christianity is all we're bathed in, we think that's a super unique story. So to juxtapose it by a lot of other traditions and even just the story of the winter solstice itself, when the sun does disappear, if you're in the Northern hemisphere, if you're up in Alaska, say you have three days of darkness. You know, in some places, even a little bit longer than that, but that's when the sun goes under that elliptical curve and we don't have it, and then it rises again, right? The winter solstice to the Christmas day sort of thing. So there really is a very significant and obvious 
sign of that death resurrection that happens every year. And she says this also correlates with what's going on in our own bodies. So assisted die off. By understanding the Tao of energy, we can see that the deeper one goes into a die off, the greater the resurrection. Similarly, the more one allows the influx of spirit during the heart expansion, the deeper one goes into die off. If we voluntarily help to wipe the slate clean, then we naturally ascend to higher levels. But if we adopt staunch adherence to our exiting stage of consciousness, then we grow no further, okay? So she's saying the secret to metamorphosis is that we can stimulate the up phase by going down first. For the cycles follow each other as sure as night follows day. Thus, the body can be triggered and assisted into catabolic states through the use of circumstance, conditions, and herbs. So helping your body crash is what she's saying. Helping your body go through the die-off, going into the depressed state, going into the sadness, going into the dissolve. That's all gonna trigger the upswing, okay? However, only if the cycle is ripe with regards to the natural rhythms of the sun and moon. So also timing this with new moons and full moons and the cycles of the progression of the equinoxes, this is also tied to our own awakening process and why I've been so interested in following the seasonal progression. And it's been a little tricky to be in Southern Arizona for this past year and a half because there really isn't any seasons. It's very like sameness. So it's been tricky for me to follow those cycles here, but I'm very interested in, in keeping up with the solstices and the equinoxes and the moon cycles because I know that my own body rhythms, just being a woman, just my menstrual cycles alone will follow a new and a full moon pattern, but so does my up and down of my awakening cycle follow this. She says, my theory is that you can actually prompt an influx stage by putting oneself through a constructed die off stage. This is the reverse tower, if you're familiar with tarot. The tower is when you go through a complete like deconstruct. And usually if you get it in the upright position, that means life's gonna give it to you. But if you get it in the reverse position, that means you are constructing your own dissolve because you know something else is coming in and you, you want to deconstruct so that you can construct faster. So she's saying you can prompt an influx stage by putting oneself through a constructional die-off stage. The idea being that the more our cup is emptied, the more spirit can enter and transmute us. So, I mean, I do this through complete emotional dissolve. I do it through completely, like even right now, I've got no makeup, but I will like go through and like not shower, cry, like wear grungy clothes, let my house go to shambles. I will get in a really negative mind state. I will do a lot of things that invoke me getting to the lowest state possible as part of an ego deconstruct because I start to hate myself when I do that. And that is part of an ego death because you get to a point where even if you love yourself and you allow yourself to go through that phase and just feel into it, even though part of your mind's going, what are you doing? You love yourself. like. You're a positive person and other people are like, you're not like this normally. And you're just like, shut up, I'm doing my thing. You're honoring your own deconstruction process. The idea being that the more our cup is empty, the more spirit can enter and transmute us. This might be very useful for, for people in chronic depression or stuck in limbo because in chronic depression, it usually means you're fighting it. Like you were trying to find a way out without fully surrendering. And that's also what the limbo stage is. Instead of always trying to prop themselves up and get higher, they should instead descend into a holy, resting pupae condition, like the caterpillar in the cocoon. And then a natural resurgence of spirit will arise after they have emptied, and that is been purged of their former self. I'm very clear I'm in one of these stages now that I'm completely dissolving a lot of the former self. One reason I chose to read this book is to kind of help myself through the process and read it to you in case you are going through it too. For example, time spent in a cave fasting, soaking in mud pools, in some sort of pressure suit, buried in the sand, or in various forms of sem sensory deprivation and stillness conditions, could prepare the body mind for the influx of light by providing rest and repolarization of the nervous system. 
She says, this is what I think the ancients knew with their various cave womb type rituals. The die-off phase was traditionally performed in a cave. You can call it the die-off cave. Visit the interior of the earth. Through purification, thou wilt find the hidden stone. Interesting that the philosopher's stone, also known as the white power of gold, iridium, and rhodium, is called the hidden stone. We talked about the ormus before. So since we're talking about it, we will just take a little bit of that. Because monatomic elements cannot be assayed for they do not form chemical or crystalline bonds with other elements or even between each other. That's why they're called monatomic, they're single, singular. I feel this die-off phase can be enhanced if undergone in a cave, in which a pool or tub of volcanic hot clay becomes the bed in which the three to five day die-off occurs. Um, some of this can be mirrored in like the moon rituals, the red tents that the women would go to together, and they would all be going through a shedding, right? Um, the moon cycle is a shedding, you're shedding the womb of all the contents, and the women in some cultures would go into a red tent and do this die off together. And traditionally, it would be like a hut, it would be like a darkened hut, and they're just in there talking, and they're just in there bleeding on hay or whatever, it's a similar idea. Obviously, the clay pool would have to be heated either by natural thermal means or some other means. The death position of feet crossed and hands crossed over the chest also facilitates the process. I also think the ideal die-off cave should have a spinal shower, she's saying. So this is something like you're running water over the spine to get that spinal energy. The spinal shower, a three inch wide column of warm water that you let fall on the head, neck, spine, while stir sitting under it in a trance state. The spinal shower is the best form of psychosomatic healing that I found and is the number one nervous system therapy for rebirth and balance. So you may wanna try that. During my acute phase of heart expansion in 2000, she says, I was called to be outside walking around all day. This way, in being exposed to the ground and the open sky, I felt my soul muse to be more intensely with me helping and guiding me through the extreme chemistry. I followed my instinct in this, and perhaps the ancients followed their instincts in being drawn into caves as being more than a mere symbol of the womb during their die-off periods. It could be that the melatonin and the darkness is a prominent agent in the die-off process. She goes on to say, rock, whether it be through electromagnetics, gravitation, Proximity to the resonance of large masses of elements in crystalline bond, conveyance of earth energy or what, has an effect on grounding. So rocks and crystals. Such grounding is necessary for the solar heart to open more fully. I have personal experience of meditating on iron rich rock in vertical formations, she says. Not only did I reach a deeper state of connection, Satori, um, on the rocks, that's a Sanskrit word. When I walked away from doing this one day, I had an episode of such severe grounding that I could barely walk along the ground. This ultra grounding is associated with the increase in nitric oxide metabolism during peak consciousness events and can accompany both massive heart expansion stages and die-off, which we talked about earlier, talking about nitric oxide, nitric oxide metabolism, su suggesting an extreme parasympathetic overdrive low blood pressure and autonomic fatigue. So just that need to just lay on the ground and ground, a super heavy, ultra parasympathetic response. So your parasympathetic is on overdrive, you're really relaxed, you can't even get up, right? To facilitate an inner conjunction and higher revelatory states, do hot rock treatments on yourself in nature. She says, I love doing that at the beach, as well as placing hot iron rich rocks on your body. Use one on the head as well. It may be that the magnetism in the rock may influence the electromagnetically sensitive hippocalmus and facilitate an inner conjunction and visionary chemistry, thereby producing the visionary frequencies theta and low alpha and the chemistry of Amrita living water DMT. So check it out. Some hot rock therapy even on your head can trigger a DMT experience, she says. 
Being in a cave during the die-off may facilitate such perfect grounding that the catabolic cycle is magnified, and so the heart expansion phase may occur with less friction and greater ease and intensity. I learned to lie down with my spine on the ground during the acute heart expansion for this reason, to ease the tension from the heart center. Um, uh, to ease the tension from the heart's extreme need for grounding, excuse me, and of course to be horizontal during periods when the blood vessels are blown wide open. The blood pressure is low, meaning the brain stem still gets adequate supply of blood. So if you're in that low phase and you aren't getting the blood pumping around because of low blood pressure because your parasympathetic is really blown open, then laying down just helps you get like enough circulation, right? So we'll end today's um, video with page 102, and she calls it what to do while dying. She gives nine steps, and of course the dying is the die off, the die off of the old catabolic processes, the old body, the old neurons, the old hormones, the chemicals, the old belief structures, literally the old you is going through a die off to get to the metamorphic you. The body is rebuilding, restructuring, new belief, new neurons, new hormones, new chemicals, everything for the transcendent you. And remember, we do this again and again on each expansion, each Kundalini awakening. There isn't just one, they are layered. So what do we do when we find ourselves in the die off? What to do while dying? Number one, relax with the collapse. Number one, allow. Melt in the unified field. Stop resistance without suppressing symptoms or running away or propping yourself up with stimulants. Whatever you do, don't try to keep going like normal. Just let it happen. That's the first thing. Number two, set environment. Make yourself comfortable. Make a nest. Play music. Put a fan on yourself. Whatever feels good and makes you feel comfy, do that. That's number two. Number three, antioxidants, okay? Because remember, you're, a lot of free radicals are going on during the metamorphic process, especially with all that nitric oxide going on. So a die-off is a free radical storm. So take mega doses of antioxidants, vitamin C, bioflavonoids, beta carotene, vitamin E, bees, fish oil. There's lots of superfoods that are full of antioxidants. Just go, go crazy. I love the, the Live brand Greens 2.0. Is full of fulvic acid and lots of antioxidants, um, even just a glass of red wine sometimes, okay? Number four, hydration. Hydration, hydration, hydration. Good hydration. Drink around five quarts of water a day. Take long baths. The body has a huge demand for water during a die-off. And that's where the stimulants want to be reduced too because especially caffeine is a dehydrating. Number five, fast. So get someone to do juice vegetables for you or fruit, uh, drink herbal tea, drink broth, bone broth. Um, she says don't even worry about eating during an intense die-off. So remember you're in a three-day intense die-off usually. So you could go to broth, you could go to juice, you could go to teas and water and all that. If you're um, full on whammy die off, then your immune system is essentially uh, catabolically using the body itself as food. And all you can do is hang out in bed or under a tree outside. So you might feel sick. Remember, it feels like a bacterial infection. So it's best not to eat when your body feels that way. And you probably won't feel like it anyway, but just like good juices and good broths and um, digestion draws the energy from the transmutation process, so you want to keep the energy in the transmutation process, or else your resurrection will not be complete. You'll you'll be half baked. Okay, you'll create more toxicity and tissue damage if you're working against the natural die off. Okay, with food. Number six is let go. <laughs> Same kind of as number one, relax and collapse, but six is let go. Giving up is the first stage of really living. Okay, and this is really hard because this is part of the ego death where you're just like, I give up, I can't do it anymore, I give up. Until we give up, we have been trying to live from the concept of self instead of self with a big S. That is my will, not thine. It is often the case with human action that what we bring about through our efforts 
turns out the very opposite of what we intended, partly because of our own internal blockages. The die-off is the most extreme experience of nature stepping in to help us move beyond the known into the vast reaches of mystic perception. Number seven, feel gratitude. It's really cool when the only thing left to do is surrender. She says, that's why I love die-off periods. They're so holy in their unassailable consumption of one. At few other times in life, except perhaps maybe death and childbearing, do we get to experience the full nature of necessity. The deeper our surrender to the living death, the more we can be reborn anew. And number eight, succumb to necessity's grace. Since metamorphosis is a dissolving of the former self, there are times when the individual will will be in total meltdown, such as in times of die-off. Thus, the necessity to surrender into the process. Meltdown is this sense, in this sense, is essential. For what is happening, uh, one can't fight anyway. For even one's fight facilitates the melting, right? It's like fighting to get out of tar. It's just going to suck you in faster. And then the final stage, number nine, and I love that she says nines because the nine is the completion, and that is the empty to receive. Self-dissolution is only half the equation. Self-dissolving is addictive, and you can do it for lifetimes, for there's a great pleasure in blasting the Tower of Babel. However, in order to be fully human and respond to the true call of evolution, you will need to do the building and action. That is the creative side of the equation as well. The dissolving is only there to provide space for the new to manifest. So remember, don't get addicted to the die-off. It is easy to do. It's not just about emptying out. There is the time to be filled again and to receive and to create and act. So know when that is. And I hope you know by listening and by incorporating some of these truths into your life, into your experience. So thank you for joining me. Again, you can follow along on the computer, lulu.com. You can read this all for free, or you can go pick up a copy of Biology of Kundalini, Exploring the Fires of Life by Jana Dixon. I hope you'll join me again here for more. Next time, we're going to read Loneliness and Cellular Panic on page 103. And I hope that you are finding these videos helpful. If you are, I hope you keep watching, make a comment down below, share them with somebody. Maybe watch some of the other videos that are available on this channel. Do a little yoga with me. Do some acupressure to help facilitate the flow in your body. Do some meditations. Whatever it is, I appreciate you joining me here. I hope that you will subscribe and get that notification bell rung so that you can find out when we're reading again. We've got quite a bit to go, but we have done a good chunk. Okay, we'll see you next time. Much love.